Santo Traficante Jr., November 15, 1914, March 17, 1987, was among the most powerful mafia bosses in the United States. He headed the traffic anti-crime family and controlled organized criminal operations in Florida and Cuba, which had previously been consolidated from several rival gangs by his father, Santo Traffic Anti Senior Traffic Anti maintained links to the Bonanno crime family in New York City, but was more closely allied with Sam Giancana in Chicago. Consequently, while generally recognized as the most powerful organized crime figure in Florida throughout much of the 20th century, Traffic Andy was not believed to have total control over Miami, Miami Beach, Fort Lauderdale, or Palm Beach. The east coast of Florida was a loosely knit conglomerate of New York family interests with links to Meyer Lansky, Bugsy Siegel, Angelo Bruno, Carlos Marcello, and Frank Rogano. Traffic and he admitted his anti-Castro activities to the United States House Select Committee on Assassinations in 1978, and vehemently denied allegations that he had knowledge of a plot to assassinate President John F. Kennedy. Federal investigators brought racketeering and conspiracy charges against him in summer of 1986. Early life traffic and he was born in Tampa, Florida, to Sicilian parents Santo Traffic and he Sr. and his wife Maria Giuseppe Cacciatore in 1914. He dropped out of high school before the 10th grade. Traffic and he maintained several residences in New York City and Florida. U.S. Treasury Department documents indicate that law enforcement believe traffic and his legitimate business interests to include several legal casinos in Cuba, a Havana drive-in movie theater, and shares in several restaurants and bars in traffic and his hometown of Tampa, Florida. He was rumored to be part of a mafia syndicate which owned many Cuban hotels and casinos. As one of the most powerful mobsters in the U.S., Traffic Andy was invited to the Havana Conference in December 1946. Traffic Andy was arrested frequently throughout the 1950s on various charges of bribery and of running illegal Bolita lotteries in Tampa's Ivor City District. He escaped conviction all but once receiving a five-year sentence for bribery in 1954, but his conviction was overturned by the Florida Supreme Court before he entered prison. Cuba Traffic and he had been operating in Cuba since the late 1940s under his father, Santo Traffic Anti Sr., a mobster in Tampa, Florida. After his father died in 1954, he became the head in Tampa and took over his father's interests in Cuba. Traffic and he moved to Cuba in 1955, where he came into contact with Batista and Meyer Lansky. During the rule of Cuba's authoritarian dictator Fulgencio Batista, Traffic and he openly operated the San Sao Usi Cabaret and the Casino International Gambling Establishments in Havana. As a leading member of the syndicate, he also was suspected of having behind the scenes interests in other syndicate owned Cuban casinos, the Hotel Havana Riviera. The Tropicana Club, the Sevilla Biltmore, the Capri Hotel Casino, the Comodoro, the Doville, and the Havana Hilton. Traffic and he was apprehended in November 1957, along with over 60 other mobsters, at the Apalican meeting in Apalican, New York. All were fined, up to $10,000 each, and given prison sentences ranging from three to five years. All the convictions were overturned on appeal in 1960. Cuba was one of the Apalican topics of discussion, particularly the gambling and narcotics smuggling interests of La Cosa Nostra on the island. The international narcotics trade was also an important topic on the Apalican agenda. In January 1958, Traffic Andy was questioned by the Cuba police regarding the Apalican meeting. A full report was made by the Cuba police. Dated January 23, 1958, includes transcripts of long-distance telephone calls made from the San Sao Usi during the period August-December 1957. The report was given to the district attorney's office. In addition, on January 23, 1958, the Cuba Department of Investigation, Havana, Cuba notified the Bureau of Narcotics that Santo Traffic and he was registered in their alien office under number 93461. 
plot to assassinate Castro after Fidel Castro's revolutionary government seized the assets of traffic and his Cuban businesses and expelled him from the country as an undesirable alien, traffic and he came into contact with various U.S. intelligence operatives and was involved in several unsuccessful plans to assassinate Castro. In 1975, the CIA declassified a report stating that Traffic Anti had been persuaded to poison Castro, an allegation he denied. In 1997, further declassified documents indicated that some mafiosi worked with the agency on assassination attempts against Castro. Illusions to these historic connections were confirmed by the CIA's 2007 declassification of the Family Jewels documents. The Family Jewels confirmed that in September 1960, the CIA recruited ex-FBI agent Robert Mayhew to approach the West Coast representative of the Chicago mob, Johnny Ross Alley. Mayhew hid the fact that he was sent by the CIA, instead portraying himself an advocate for international corporations. He offered to pay $150,000 to have Castro killed, but Ross Ellie declined any pay and introduced Mayhew to two men he referred to as Sam Gold and Joe. Sam Gold was Sam Gincana, Joe was Traffic Anti. The CIA and the Mafia had a common enemy in Castro, a communist revolutionary who had shut down Cuba's lucrative casino businesses. JFK Conspiracy Allegations In 1976, Cuban exile and FBI informant Jose Alman told the Washington Post that in September 1962, Traffic and he had offered him a loan of $1.5 million to replace Alman's three-story, ramshackle motel with a 12-story glass wonder. He said that Traffic and he complained about the honesty of the Kennedys and their attacks on Jimmy Hoffa and other associates. According to Ailman, when he told Traffic Anti that President John F. Kennedy would likely be re-elected, Traffic Anti replied, No, Jose, he is going to be hit. Ailman claimed to have reported Traffic Anti's comments to his FBI contacts, who dismissed the Kennedy warnings as gangland braggadocio. In 1978, both Traffic Anti and Alman were called to testify before members of the United States House Select Committee on Assassinations investigating possible links between Kennedy assassin Lee Harvey Oswald and anti-Castro Cubans, including the theory that Castro had Kennedy killed in retaliation for the CIA's attempts on his own life. On September 27, 1978, Alman reiterated to HSCA investigators that Traffic and he had complained to him for hours in June or July 1963 about Kennedy's crackdown on organized crime at a meeting to discuss a business loan. The HSCA had previously quoted Alman as stating that he thought Traffic and his use of the phrase, he is going to be hit, meant that the mob boss knew Kennedy was going to be killed. When this was pointed out, Alman denied that he meant that he believed Kennedy was going to murdered and said he thought that traffic and he meant that Kennedy was going to be hit politically during the next election. He stated that he was concerned for his safety and was not certain that he had ever correctly heard or understood Traffic Anti's comment. Got after a grant of immunity from prosecution, Traffic Anti testified before the HSCA the following day, September 28th and refuted the allegation that he told Alman that Kennedy was going to be hit. He stated that he was positive that he did not say it because he always spoke to Alman in Spanish, and said that there was no way to state the phrase in Spanish. Traffic and he also stated that he had no recollection of meeting Oswald or Oswald's assassin, Jack Ruby. During his testimony, Traffic and he also admitted for the first time that he had worked with the CIA from 1960 to 1961 for an attempt to poison Castro but stated that his role was only as an interpreter between CIA officials and Cuban exiles. He testified that he was brought into the plot by Ross Alley and Gincana, who had been recruited by Mayhew. Traffic and he said that he introduced the trio to Cuban exiles in Florida. He stated that he received no payment for his involvement and that he acted out of patriotism. Oh, January 14, 1992, Traffic Anti's former attorney, 
Frank Rogano told Jack Newfield of the New York Post that he relayed a request from Hoffa to Traffic Ante and New Orleans boss Carlos Marcello to have Kennedy killed. He repeated the claim two days later on ABC's Good Morning America in Newfield's frontline report entitled JFK, Hoffa and Mob broadcast in November 1992, and again in his 1994 autobiography Mob Lawyer. According to Rogano, he met Alpha at the Teamsters headquarters in Washington, D.C., then delivered the message to Traffic Ante and Marcello in a meeting at the Royal Orleans Hotel in New Orleans. He stated he was chosen by Hoffa because, as both Hoffa and Traffic Ante's lawyer, he could be assured of attorney-client privilege. Reagano also claimed that Traffic Ante, four days prior to his death, delivered a deathbed confession which suggested that Marcello was meant to assassinate Robert F. Kennedy instead of his brother, the president. He claimed three witnesses could support his statement that he met traffic anti in Tampa, but refused to name them, adding, One guy is afraid of retaliation. The other guys are two doctors, who say they'll testify if they're summoned to court. In his book Reclaiming History, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, Vincent Bugliosi has claimed there to be many flaws in Reagano's claims, including his own claim that traffic and he was most likely not in Tampa on the day in question, but was rather in North Miami Beach, Florida, receiving dialysis treatments. In 2005, Lamar Walren in Tom Hartman's book Ultimate Sacrifice said that Traffic Ante was behind an aborted plot to kill Kennedy in Tampa on November 18, 1963. Later years and death Traffic Ante was summoned to court in 1986 and questioned about his involvement with the King's Court Bottle Club operated by members of the Bonanno crime family, including undercover FBI agent Joseph D. Joe Pistoni a.k.a. Donnie Brasco. Traffic Ante again escaped conviction. On March 17, 1987, Traffic Ante died at the age of 72 at the Texas Heart Institute in Houston where he had gone for heart surgery. His wife, Josephine, died in 2015 at the age of 95. He is survived by two of his daughters. After the death of his wife, the Traffic Ante family sold their Tampa 1970 built home for $950,000. In February 2016, many of Traffic Ante's personal belongings were sold at an auction in St. Petersburg, Florida. References Further reading Cigar City Mafia, A Complete History of the Tampa Underworld, 2004 Scott M. D. H. Barricade Books ISBN 1-56980-266-1 The Silent Dawn, The Criminal Underworld of Santo Traffic Ante Jr., 2007, Scott M. D. H. Barricade Books ISBN 1-56980-322-6 Mob Lawyer, 1996, Frank Rogano Random House ISBN 0-517-16722-0 White Shadow 2006 Ace Atkins G.P. Putnam ISBN 0-399-15355-1 Donnie Brasco My Undercover Life in the Mafia Joseph D. Pistoni 1987 External Links Associated Press Report on Traffic Ante's Death Short History of the Mafia in Tampa, Little Man, Meyer Lansky and the Gangster Life by Robert Lacey, Santo Traffic Ante Jr. Find a Grave. Retrieved June 12, 2013.